Hello and welcome again to River Talk. I'm joined here by uh, Jörg Radebauer from Freilander Consulting, uh, who is the happy and uh, jubilant winner of the second European River Prize for the River Muir. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Rad, uh, Jörg, sorry, a few questions about uh, what's happened in, in, the, in the river and, and what a little bit of the history of uh, your success. So maybe first, Jörg, could you explain a little bit what, what's so special about the River Muir? What really ins inspires you when you think about it? Yeah, I was born on the River Moor, and when I was young, the River Moor was one of the dirtiest rivers in in Europe. So nobody of us take care about the Moor. It was not interesting for us. And my father was a fisher, and and so I got fishing upstream where the Moor was really very nice. And so I decided to study river restoration. This is one of the stories. No, but uh, we have to take into account. The river moor was really very dirty, and then in the in the 80s they started a restoration program on on uh, for for the river, and the the quality of the moor uh, is now really in a very good condition. This was the precondition for all this was what we are did now. Yeah. Could you could you give us a bit more of a, a bit more color to what what sort of status? What were the problems in the river before the work started to happen? What, what's the history of the river really? Uh, the the river was straightened. That I think all rivers in, in developed countries are, and the river was very very dirty. That means it was ecologically more or less dead. And after this, uh, the river became better and better, but it was still straightened, and that was the problem we faced. And we started in 1995 the first program for river restoration with a life program. It was a very small one, and with uh, in partnership with Slovenian uh, on the border sector of the Moor. And this was the starting point for in, in, in some, I think, five projects we did now. And we had about, meanwhile, 120 kilometers of Moor we restored. We, we, we did better. Could you maybe to give even a bit, a bit of detail, could you think of one of these initiatives and really tell us what's special about it, what you've done and, and what's, what's the difference it's really made to the river? Uh, what we did, we gave the river more space. And I think that that's it. I learned in, in, on university we have to do the measures and we have to plan it and whatever. But it's not necessary. We gave the river space. We initiated some, some side branches and the river did more or less all by its own because the river has so much potentials. As I said, we, we really worked hard on, on killing rivers in the 70s and 80s and we failed because the river has so much potentials. And if you give the river back the, the space, if you give the river the chance to work by its own, it do it, and it do it in a very, very short time in ecological terms. Because usually you say you need 20 years, 50 years, if, till something is back to, to good conditions. When you do it at a river, you don't need more than five years, and the river gets back all its, its potentials and, and, and all its possibilities. And what's, what's been the reaction of people in the basin to these developments? The, as they see this river really sort of come back to life again. Are, are oh, first, it was really hard because nobody gave us the, the catchment. We didn't get uh, enough money. They said, oh, it's not necessary, we don't need it. But when we started the first project and when the people saw how beautiful a river can be, how Beauty for it is for the children to, to can go into a, a river because it's it's wide and it's there are side arms and they can play in it. Then other people from other municipalities came to us and say, "Oh, can you do something like that also in our municipality?" And so we spread the idea, and now it's really so that they waiting for the next project. They say, "Okay, now the life period now ends. I hope." you will make a new project because we want here and we want here and we want here. Okay, so they've really become your own ambassadors now in the river basin. So if, if you look forward from where you are now and you're anticipating your next projects, what's the next big challenges you really think you have to overcome? Uh, 
<laughs> it's a good question. We did a lot of work on river restoration now, and, and now I think we have to do more monitoring because it's necessary to know how good it works, how good it worked, uh, what worked well, what didn't work so good. Uh, we want to make something uh, with this uh, goods and services for, for the ecosystem. Can we say how much money it brings for the, for the, for the whole system? Uh, and surely we want to have some new river restoration. This is this now we have to ne negotiate with the, with the municipalities and with the government. And you mentioned it was mentioned towards the end of this morning's uh, presentation that um, you have a, a protocol now for dealing with uh, hydropower development. In the is that going to be a challenging area? Yeah, this was the second thing. Um, we did uh, this river restoration on about 120 kilometers, and there are big demands for hydroelectric power stations on the river because it's easy. It's <laughs> it's, it's 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 quick money in in fact. Uh, and we started a negotiation process with the companies, with the government, uh, and with stakeholders. And for two years, we tried to negotiate this, this, this theme. And it was a fact that all the sections where we did measures, they accepted that there will be no hydroelectric power plants for the future now for the next period, but I think it, it will go on. And everywhere where, where, where we did nothing till now, they say, but here we have a good idea, and here we have a good idea, and here we have a good idea. So it's, I think we have to mark new parts of the river with projects, though that there are no hydroelectric power plants. And I, I must say, uh, for example, in the capital area of Graz, for me, a power plant is no problem because there it opens opportunities for recreation, for the people to bring the people to the water, and this c could be a good idea. So, it was the negotiation process? We said, here we can imagine that it is possible that that there is a hydroelectric power plant, and these are sections where we say no. So you see that you have to live with a, a mix of these different river yeah. users and uh, so forth. Well, perhaps the final question then, because you did receive a prize, is to uh, explain a little bit what, what you see yourself doing with the prize. There's, of course, a nice uh, trophy, if you like, and you, but you also have some cash, and I know you already have some ideas of how you want to use the, the prize. Yeah, the $25,000 is, uh, um, is, nice, is a nice prize, but when you working on, on these themes, it's, it's not so much. You can't do so much. So we said we will spend this money for uh, children, for awareness raising by children. We have to think about. But the price at itself is a, a, a driving force for working on the river further, further and to cooperate with the Slovenian partners uh, to bring the whole moor in this system. So. We are next, next year in, in Brisbane for the International River Prize and we have some talks yesterday uh, where we said we will join with, with the Slovenian projects and make the whole Moor River for, for, uh, for the application to, to the International River Prize. So, so. Always looking to the future. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jörg. Bye -bye.